Many people ask, is it even possible to be holy since only God is holy? Some even go further to say, if you say you are holy, you are blaspheming, you are proud, and you need to repent for even thinking that you, a human being, can be holy. Well, the truth of the matter is that if you are a Christian, if you have believed in Christ for salvation, you have been washed by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit and set apart from the world for godliness. The Apostle Peter was writing to Christians, and he says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 to 16. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. Holiness is a requirement for every Christian. The writer of Hebrews says, Without holiness, no one will see the Lord, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. To be holy means, you have been set apart for honorable use. That is to be dedicated or consecrated to God or a religious purpose. Or to be devoted or set apart for the service of God. Or to be morally and spiritually excellent. Titus chapter 3 verses 3 to 5 says, for at one time we too were foolish, disobedient, misled, and enslaved to all sorts of desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not by the righteous deeds we had done, but according to his mercy, through the washing of new birth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So, here we learn that, while we were still rebellious, and living in sin, God stepped in and pulled us out of the harmful lifestyle. When we believe in him for salvation, he saves us, cleanses us, and sets us apart for righteousness. This means, the moment you are born again, you are set apart for Christ. The Holy Spirit comes to reside in you and impacts his holiness into you. This is referred to as positional holiness. This is holiness you acquire by virtue of being a child of God. But that is not the end of the holiness journey. God had given you holiness through his Son, but he expects you to cultivate a lifestyle of holiness, as we have been told in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 14 to 16. And God also commands us to cleanse ourselves of all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. When Paul says we should bring holiness to perfection, it means we should be increasing in spiritual fruitfulness every day. Every day we are to consider ourselves dead to sin, and refuse to go back to our former corrupt lifestyle. That is how we will be able to cleanse ourselves from what is dishonorable, and become vessels for honorable use, set apart as holy, and useful to the master for every good work, as we are told in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Holiness is the mark of every true Christian. The Apostle John says in 1 John chapter 3 verses 9 to 10 that, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. But some may ask, are you saying we must be as holy as God Almighty? God is inherently holy, he is the embodiment of holiness. Whilst we, on the other hand, become holy because our relationship with Jesus Christ. So we increase in holiness as we increase in our knowledge and relationship with Christ. We get the picture better when we read Isaiah chapter 6 to 1 minus 8. The prophet Isaiah was perceived as a holy man of God. But when Isaiah sees God in his holiness, in his supreme majesty and infinite moral purity, he is immediately acutely aware of his own sinfulness and sees his inadequacies and cries for help. No matter how holy we become, when we stand in the mirror of God's holiness we shall see we still fall short. That is why we are charged to pursue holiness, we are to grow in holiness. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 to 11, we are told, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities and continue to grow in them, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever lacks these traits is nearsighted to the point of blindness, having forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, strive to make your calling and election sure. 
for if you practice these things you will never stumble. And you will receive a lavish reception into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every Christian who is serious about pursuing holiness must study and restudy and restudy Peter's second letter. The virtues he lists are the qualities that should be found in a holy Christian. That is why he charges us to make every effort to grow in these virtues. The subject of the pursuit of holiness is so close to Peter's heart that he reminds us again in chapter 3 of 2 Peter. Therefore, beloved, as you anticipate these things, make every effort to be found at peace, spotless and blameless in his sight. And at the end of his letter, he gives us this caution. Therefore, beloved, since you already know these things, be on your guard so that you will not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure standing. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. But why do we have to grow in grace? Why should we make every effort to increase in virtue? Why is it necessary for every Christian to earnestly, faithfully, and diligently pursue holiness? Because God has said over and over again that. Be ye holy because I am holy. That should be your greatest motivation to pursue holiness. How do we go about pursuing holiness? Cultivating a lifestyle of holiness does not mean we should make a list of do's and don'ts and walk around ticking them off. Paul says, we have been freed from the letter of the law, but now we live according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. We are therefore told, to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So growing in holiness is God working with us in sanctification to cultivate the virtues that he wants to see in us. Holiness will not be brought to completion in our lives with no effort on our part. We are invited to participate in God's work in us. It is God's ultimate desire for us as believers to be holy and conform to the image of his Son, Jesus. Holiness is God's will for every Christian. God understands that our flesh is weak and that we shall not reach sinless perfection in this world. That is why he has made a provision for our sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. Our pursuit of holiness in this world includes daily confessing and forsaking sin. God helps us in our weakness by giving us his Holy Spirit who reveals the mind of Christ to us and enables us to carry out his will. God has been gracious enough to redeem us from sin and death and give us new life in Christ. The very least we can do is offer our lives back to him in complete surrender and holiness, which is for our benefit. Because of God's mercies, we should be living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. If this message has blessed you, you can support our work by subscribing and sharing it with friends and family. God bless you. Amen.